always meet someone and they're like, oh, what do you do? I said, I'm a trader. And they said, oh, I know someone who does trading. Oh. It's really important for people that are looking at trading and thinking about doing it to see the difference between like the whole Instagram image and then the reality of it. Point A is a past, point C is the future. You're in point B right now. That is the point that you're in. That is the point you need to focus on. Forget point C, forget point A. It doesn't matter, it's irrelevant. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So I've got an interesting video for you guys today. I'm just about to get my friend to come into the to the Forex sofa and talk about trading. I think a lot of the information will resonate to the whole community. So Elliot, mate, do you wanna come in? You ready? I'm gonna do the clap. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> nice to be here. Where do you want to start, mate? What do you want to get off your chest? I think the most obvious one, really, would, would, would be the difference between wanting to become a trader mm -hmm. and, you know, the, 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 the difference between actually doing that yeah. and then the whole Instagram stuff, because it's completely different. Yeah, yeah. okay. All right, let's, let's talk. There's, okay, there's two, different, there's two different subjects in that. The... In the, let's let's talk about the trading journey to start with, and I'll I'll go I'll start, and then you can go on to talk about yours. But regarding the trading journey, you know I don't know where you guys are at in your trading journey, but for me, it's not so much a monetary builder for me. It's more uh, a mental builder. You know the mm -hmm. things that you go through, the lows that you go through, the debt that you get into. You know you go through it, and it builds you. You know you get to that lowest level. And it builds you to be who you who you're gonna be when you're a profitable trader. So, mm -hmm. you know, what, tell tell us about your experiences, or tell tell them about your experience. So, to be honest, with my experiences, of course, it's probably the same as anyone else that's been a trader. Um, lots of lows and lots of times that you could never have seen coming. And this is the other thing I think as well is there's not enough talk about the kind of stages you're going to have to go through to become a trader. Yeah. It's all just like fun and games and fairy tales and it's just not the case. Yeah. Um, hey, but, but that's what it's betrayed. That's, and a lot of people are realising that now, you know, trading is mm. betrayed in, in the worst way possible mm. um, and it needs to be fixed and it needs to be addressed. And it's, it's happening yeah, yeah, yeah. through these specific people. I mean, Mr. Lee, Sean Lee <laughs> is, uh, is doing his part, which is good. <laughs> but, um, yeah, but also I think like, People are still learning the hard way. And I think also to, like, to a certain extent, you're always gonna learn the hard way. Mm -hmm. But there is just a huge narrative that's being pushed and it's just not right. Yeah. But from my, from my experiences, I think you made a good point there. And it was like trading, you sometimes, well, most people get into trading because you know, you want the money, yeah. you want a nice car, you want all that stuff. But then, well, for me anyway, once I started, it was the, the challenge, the, you know, the idea of, the intellect, like being more intellectual because of it, or mm -hmm. you know, overcoming certain problems became more attractive. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's the same now. You know, if I make a lot of money in a week, it's great and I'm really happy. But if I have a, a bit of a tough week and then I finish the week really strong after, you know, and I'm, I manage to use my head with it, I feel even better. Yeah, and I'm sure it's the same for you as well. Yeah, yeah, you learn to be. A little bit less emotional about the money, anyway. Yeah, yeah. So a lot of the time, you're. But that's from when. More. That's from. That's from where you don't need the money as much. So as soon as you yeah, start, you know, true. the transition between getting profitable, you get money behind you, and then the emotional attachment to money changes mm -hmm. when you've actually got money. Yeah. And everyone has it at the beginning, you know. You, you, everyone tries to get out of the trenches, and I've said this in in the previous in a previous video is that you're not going to get out of the trenches from trading unless you're ready to you know commit five six seven eight mm. years to the journey mm. um but you know people ask me you know should i keep my daily job uh yes mm. yeah you should because the stress that comes from it and i've been there elliot's been there mm. of where we've quit our jobs went straight balls deep into <laughs> it and it's caused yeah. serious serious issues like, sorry, but for me as well, I left my job when I wasn't ready to, to trade. Mm -hmm. So like, I quit because I just didn't want to be at work anymore. That's the long story short. Um, and it just caused a hell of a lot more problems in terms of, you know, progressing with trading when you're so, oh shit, I need to do it now. You know, I need to make money now because I haven't got a job. There's nothing wrong with keeping a job to support your trading. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people that I speak to, like on my Instagram or in uh, my Telegram stuff, 
who are working jobs and they're working training around jobs while they're still learning. At the end of the day as well, you're gonna lose money anyway. Like whether yeah. you leave your job or it's you stay at your job. Exactly. So if you've got a job where you can just have a bit of money coming in, it gives you free money to trade with as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Makes sense. And, and and you know, don't be don't be ashamed of doing that, you know. Exactly. Yeah, people yeah, yeah. working at Sainsbury's, people working at Tesco's, you know, you can make a lot of money in those jobs. I know someone who is making a considerable amount of money f- working uh, in a job. Yeah, in a job. Yeah, yeah. And he just bought a house. Bought a house. Yeah. So which is great, but at, at, at a young age. But also the thing with being ashamed about working a job and making sure that, you know, you, you just got to do what you have to do. And, and this is the other thing that I think Instagram being such a big part of the problem with this mm-hmm. is if you're a trader, you have to be making loads of money. Mm-hmm. If you're a trader, you have to have a BMW M4 mm-hmm. or an old R8 yeah. or a McLaren. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If yeah, you're yeah. a trader, you've got to, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Whereas the expectations and there's so many expectations. And it's so yeah. bad. It really is so mm-hmm. bad because it's not the reality of trading. And that's coming from us both as mm. traders. You know, yes, I've had nice cars. Yes, Elliot's had nice cars. Mm. But it's, you know, it, it's, it's it's after. Not a real process yeah, exactly. Well. It's it's, and we both say that it was it's stupid. You know, it it was stupid to to go the route that we did mm. regarding whips. Um, learning learning the hard way. Yeah, but it's also it's like efficiency as well. It's like if you cut out all of the stuff that. For example, worrying about what other people think when you learn to trade, worrying about what you know other traders are doing when you learn to trade, you're cutting out so much efficiency in terms of your progression. If you just got on with what you know you should be doing, like studying, mm-hmm. chart work, mm-hmm. back testing, mm-hmm. uh, journaling, Amen. Or anything, yeah, you progress a lot more than going. Oh, I need to flip this account into two hundred yeah. quid from one hundred yeah. quid. It, it, I need to buy a car rather than buying a house. Like, is all of the to things. prove your friends wrong. Yeah. And, and yeah, again, yeah. let's. Do you know what? Let's talk about your friends actually. Right. So, so for me, I've got amazing friends around me. Um, I'm close. I've got sort of a load of different groups of people, and you can go onto your story about your friends. Mm. They will never understand you in your trading. They never understand the journey that you're going to go through or that you've been through. And again, a lot of people now can resonate with what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Um, you'll, you'll, you'll find yourself distancing from being distant from your friends because of the mission that you're on. Mm-hmm. When you are involved in trading, involved in Forex, you're on one mission and that's to become profitable. Okay? Mm-hmm. And you'll find your friends are looking at you like, what is this dude yeah. doing? Why is he doing this? Where is he? Where is he going? Because they don't understand what is actually going on and, and, you know, the thought process. And it took me ages to get through, you know, that stage of, you know, my friends calling me this, calling me that. Mm-hmm. And at the end of the day, you know, none of my friends are on my level. And I say that in not a rude way. Um, mm-hmm. For the friends who are watching this, <laughs> we're gonna get some text later. Man. <laughs> but you know, I I'm I'm on a different I'm on a different level to them. Um, I'm I'm mark it open fifteen minutes. Let's mark it open fifteen minutes. <laughs> There's the alarm. Um, what my 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 what my two piece with you know talking about friends is you know as if you can make a, if you can make money right working for yourself on your own terms. Mm-hmm. And even just support yourself with, I don't know, an apartment, with car payments, with eating out, mm-hmm. with anything. If you can support yourself, you're better off than the majority of people. You so don't this. worry about your friends saying this, saying that. I've been there, I've been through it, I've done that. You, mm-hmm. you end up not caring because mm-hmm. you're on a way, way different le- wavelength, mm-hmm. way different level to them. Um, and, and also you've got... a try and, well, in, from my experience as well, because obviously I, I've had family members, friends, you name it, saying trading's not, we all have people saying trading's not gonna work at some point, <laughs> yeah. Who, whether it's friends, family, you gotta try and get within yourself, you gotta try and understand that they don't understand. Yeah. I know that sounds really obvious, Yeah. but there's a level of like, I'm, I think I, I get that, but then still blaming them for not understanding. Mm-hmm. like. For me, I just know people don't understand. Yeah. I, don't, well, I don't talk about my trading with my other friends that don't get it. Mm-hmm. I don't really talk to my family about it. It's just what I do. We talk about it. You know, I have my friends that are traders or whatever. But you've got to understand that they, don't, they won't always understand. Um, 
But I think the other point you was going to make was the difference between making money on your own, self-employed, whether it be trading, whether it be whatever, your own business, and just a job. Is that, is yeah. that a valid point to make? Yeah, 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 absolutely. But, but again, again, don't get us wrong. It's, it's you know, you, you always need to make sure that you're in a, in a good financial position. Mm. Um, so it's also finding the balance of don't leave your job too early mm. Mm. and, you know, don't leave your job too late. So it's for you to find out and for mm. you to understand. But let's go on to the next mm. point. Okay, all right. So the next subject that we want to talk about is, mm. you know, is being around your friends and, you know, they're levelling up and you're staying in the same position. Mm. Okay, so do you want to go into that mm. and talk about, you <laughs> know? Yes. yes, I do, lads. It's, there's a weird, there's a weird, um, like, kind of period in trading, I think we all will all agree, where you're doing okay or you're doing well, but other people around you are maybe Living. buying houses or... You know, you're starting families, whether if you're a bit older than us, obviously maybe even if you're our age, but especially with the like, whole the whole buying a house thing. I think buying a house is probably one of the most popular ones. Mm -hmm. Like when you see your friends buying a house and you're like, oh shit, like I'm still renting, I haven't even thought about buying a house yet and stuff. But with trading, and there's no such thing as the holy grail. I'm not I'm not saying there is, but I'm saying when you find your oh, way. We got the holy grail, man, what are you talking well, about? Well yeah, we can't tell them that then. <laughs> <laughs> but when you find your niche so to speak of trading you will go at a faster pace than other way, people around you way faster oh, way faster pace. let me let so let me talk about what, what we do sorry it's really hot in here anyway so let's talk about what we do so we have we both have down periods of time mm. uh but we call it we call it pip season so it's pip season now no okay so there's pip seasons and then there's down seasons all right mm. and in the pip seasons what we do is the lot sizes go from from <laughs> hundreds 2000. <laughs> the lot sizes go from like one to two lots to like five to ten lots in that period of time. When we both know that we're at the level that our peak level, mm -hmm. and everyone has this, you know, from, traders won't talk about this because they don't know it because they don't fucking they don't trade. Understand themselves either. They don't trade. No, yeah, yeah. Um, so you have down periods and you have up periods. In the up periods, we make sure to make our money in those periods, mm -hmm. and in the down periods, we make sure to cut our losses. We down our lot sizes, so on and so forth. Mm. And you guys will learn this when you get to the level that you want to be at. Mm. You have to, you have to make the most of. Like sometimes you're floating. Yeah. And it's absolutely fine to float if you're a trader. A lot of people don't want to float, and then they end up sinking. Mm -hmm. do, do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Like you, you'll go. Oh, I haven't made ten grand this month. Like, like I did. I don't want to say it. I haven't, if you haven't made 10 grand this month, they'll go, I've got to make 20 grand this month. Yeah. And then you lose fucking 15 grand yeah. because you're, you're trying to be a dick. Yeah. And we've been there. We've both, and been we've both done it. Yeah. But, but like you were saying, when you have those periods of you're like, right, I feel fucking good. Yeah. I wake up in the morning, I know I'm on point. I see a trade, I know where it's going. Mm -hmm. All of this stuff, you make the most of it at that point. Yeah. So the rest of the time, don't start stressing out and trying to like overdo it because it's just not going to benefit. Also, those periods tend to be the same kind of periods where your psychology is a bit off, mm -hmm. which is another thing in trading that you know does take a lot. I, I don't feel that I'm at the level yet where I've like got my psychology on complete lock. Mm -hmm. There are still periods for me where I'm iffy, or you know I have to check myself a few times in, in a week, whatever. But those are the same times that you'll be having those those periods where you should just focus on floating yeah. rather than trying to smash out pits. Like if you feel awkward about a trade or you don't feel right in the day and you're still putting five locks on, what do you think is going to happen? Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, it's, it's, it's a common thing. Let's talk about uh, let's talk about expectations of traders. So mm -hmm. you see on IG, you know, we got the fucking McLarens, you got the Lamborghinis, you got the M4s, yeah. old R8s. Old R8s, yeah. <laughs> Never see a new one, um, never see a new one. Was the old oh one? no, we're doing some signal providers, lads. Yeah, the signal providers. Yeah, yeah. Get the we're, green hurricane. We're not going to that on this though. Yeah. Anyway, anyway. <laughs> no, but so for another day, that. The expectation of traders, you know, um, it's fucked. Mm. It, to in, put it in simple terms, it really is fucked. Mm. A lot of people think traders are this sort of person. When you go out to eat, you know, I'm embarrassed now to talk about what I do. For yeah, yeah. 
Which is funny, isn't it? Because the whole like other side of it is, oh, I'm a trader, blah, 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 blah. But like, even for me as well, I, if someone asks what I do, I say finance now. Yeah, yeah, same. If I say, oh, I'm a Forex trader, you put yourself into the bracket of, there's such a <laughs> set bracket for that, isn't there? Yeah. Just a, just a wanker, basically, yeah. Basically, so yeah. Course, like, basically. Yeah. You know what? So I go out to, you know, a few, I meet people, go out to parties, this, that, and the other. I'm young, so I do that sort of shit. But, you know, I always meet someone and they're like, oh, what do you do? I said, I'm a trader. And they say, oh, I know someone who does trading. Oh, oh I yeah. forgot about that. He does, yeah, he does yeah. these signals. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, cool, cool, cool. He's like, mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Apparently you make a little money from that. <laughs> I'm like, okay, yeah. you don't know what trading is. You never, you never been knowing what trading was. Mm. Um, Tra tra it's so frustrating because trading is is confusing. Mm. Okay, you got them signal providers mm. and then you got us. You're, you're okay, trade. you got fucking John Dollary and then you got us. <laughs> I, I hate to be put in the same bracket as these other motherfuckers. Yeah. Um, but you know, I hope my YouTube comes across as different to other people. The kind of narrative that's being pushed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's the other thing as well with like. Saying what you do, I know we're probably going on from that now, but mm. saying what you do, you'd always get, oh, can you teach me? Yeah, fuck. <laughs> can you teach me, or can't you just text me when you're trading me trading? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> nope, no, I cannot. So that's work like that. Um, but yeah, there is, a, there is a huge difference. And I, and I also think that it's really important for people that are, are looking at trading and thinking about doing it to see the difference between like the whole Instagram image mm -hmm. And then the reality of it, which is just completely different. Yeah. Again, I had a lot of friends um, talk about. Before we go into that, actually, you know, this conversation is very good. I don't, I don't, I don't think I've seen anything as real as what we're having right mm. now on on YouTube to the level that we're talking about. You know, things that are just honest things. We're not, yeah, we're not selling anything. Mm -hmm. And this, and this is the thing oh, as yeah. well. Like, <laughs> no, 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 yeah, no. But, as, as of right now, this, this conversation has no conflict of interest. Yeah. Just, like, I think that's a fair thing to say. Like, there's, no, there's no reason Except for doing my funded program. <laughs> 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 okay, so the, the next point that you know, we're going to make is about being in the lowest points. And I, I've, mm. it's not been too long where I've been in a pretty low point. Uh, that was because of COVID. Managed to dig myself back out of it, but COVID for me was very, very difficult. Um, especially, you know, being so enclosed indoors. Mm. Um, There's no releases. You can't go out and release yeah. your stress or anything like that. Yeah. It's a weird period for us. Anyway, so, you know, I think it's, it's a good point to talk about our lowest points. I, I couldn't tell you a specific mm. low point that I've been in. Not what I can. But what I can tell you, and you can go on to that in a minute, but mm. what I can tell you is that when you get to the lowest point, you know, in yourself, Everything's come becomes so much clearer. Mm. Everything Big you, time. you can it's you're so low and you're so at the bottom, you just become fearless. Mm. It's a dangerous place to be in positively. You're just taking uh, my words out of my mouth with that one. Well there's there was a there was a time and I won't make it a long story, but there was a time where I think I as I said earlier, I left my job before I was ready to trade. So there was a point where I had like, like the level of no money was ridiculous. I couldn't afford a cup of coffee. Mm -hmm. And I remember my, my cousin dropping me down. I was going to see my mum. My cousin dropped me in the train station like quite near to where my mum's is, like another 20 minutes on the train. And I went to buy a ticket and I had nothing in there. Mm -hmm. And I rejected my card. And I had um, like a seven grand debt from my car finance. Mm -hmm. I had my credit card at like max out. I had my max overdraft going on. And I had the, a trade on that was like, if I, if I lost the trade, my account was finished. Mm -hmm. So I was like, you know, it could not get any worse than that day. And I just remember standing there at the train station, like almost in tears. And I was just like, like, do you know what? <laughs> like, so what? Like, yeah. I'm still standing here, I'm not dead. And then from there, yeah. you end up just, put, because you get so, so kind of, like you said, you get fearless with it, it, it pushes you forward. So every time you have like a, a low or a setback, in my opinion, it seems to push you forward mm -hmm. into a next place mm -hmm. that's a better place. Yeah. And that was the case for me in that in that situation. So after that, I then started pushing forward a bit. Yeah. Um, and then you don't even look back. That's the thing. Yeah, when you get really out of that small period, it's such a minimum mm -hmm. small period compared to your whole life. As yeah. soon as you push out of it, you look back and think, 
How did I make it out of that? <laughs> you, you forget about it. You actually forget about the lowest of low points that mm. you've been in. Um, and I always just think as well, it's something to tell your kids about. Exactly. It, like, it's all part of the... And when you think about it like that, it's, it, it's really, well, for me, it was really comforting. Like, I was having a shit time, and I was like, well, when I get over this, it'll be another good story. Mm -hmm. Like, and I just not... <laughs> don't go do stupid things for no reason, but, you know. Yeah, just be fearless. And, sorry, sorry to cut you off, but, like, I think I think the biggest thing that I've learned is, and, and again, I've been in some fucking low and stressful times. Mm. I always manage to get through them. So if you're in a bad position right now, whatever your debt is, whatever your issues are, whatever your problems are, it'll be fine. As long as it isn't in, in immediate, like family issues regarding death, uh, you know that takes a little bit more time yeah. to get over. But you know the monetary issues, or you you're under pressure because you want this or you want that, mm. it doesn't fucking matter. And it, it only till you realise how minimal it is mm. is when you're winning. And one last thing I want to make on this point is that there's two things, right? So there's, there's, there's point A, point B, and point C, right? Point A is a past, point C is the future. You're in point B right now. That is the point that you're in. That is the point you need to focus on. Forget point C, forget point A. It doesn't matter, it's irrelevant. Mm. The point that you're in at that specific time is what you need to focus on. Anything yeah. else is not is 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 pointless is you know it's it's fugazi fugazi yeah yeah, yeah yeah it's such a good point it's such a good point so i i, I don't know again this this conversation is just about our experiences you know what we've been through what we can offer to you yeah. guys and just the chat really it's the same with, like like you just said with the point a and the point c thing and the point the point with b being where you need to focus on whether you're looking at what you've done so far to get where you are which is good it's always good to have a check and think about what you've achieved and remind yourself that you are capable of, of changing stuff. But when you're looking at what you want to do in the future, you should have it there. Mm -hmm. And it might, for me, it works better is I have it there and then I just forget about it. Yeah. And I focus on what, yeah. what, uh, what I'm doing. You can't progress if you're not focusing on what you're doing now. It doesn't matter what you're going to do in a year's time, what you're going to do in a week's time. It's not going to make a difference to what happens now. Yeah. What you do now is going to make a difference to what happens in a week's time, what yeah. happens in a year's time, etc. So, yeah. yeah, just agreeing on that point there. Key for um, let's talk about courses. Let, uh, you, uh, let's uh, just uh, go. Uh, let's uh, just, uh, anyone, uh, anyone, anyone who's on my Instagram and is watching this from my Instagram knows I'm about to. <laughs> this is my go in, mate. Let's go in on these fucking courses. So, I have like conversations at least three times a week with someone <laughs> who's asking me about a course. What do I think of this course? What do I think of this person? What do I think? You set him off now, guys. It's this. It, it, listen, the charts are there for a reason. You study the charts. Like this. Okay, you, are you selling any courses? No. Nope. Okay, good. Ask when, me, am I ever going to sell the courses? Are you ever going to sell any courses? No. Nope. Perfect. If you look at traders who sell courses, one, if they, if they can trade, what they put in their course will not be the same as the way they trade. Mm -hmm. Agreed? Amen. Amen. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. If they can't trade and they make a course, you won't know the difference between someone who can trade and can't trade because yeah. the courses will be built anyway. Yeah. But my point being, most But it won't be. Just... Do you know what, actually? Do you know what I've realised from looking at other people's courses? Right. Okay. Is that it's, it's basic shit. So these people who come off the streets, mm. Excuse me. I want to get into trading. Mm -hmm. They they want to learn the basics, mm -hmm. right? All of the shits on YouTube. The simple shits on YouTube. Mm -hmm. If you want to learn to be profitable, courses aren't the way. No. Go to TradingView. Go to MT4. Go to whatever platform you mm -hmm. want to use. Look at the chart, and I promise you, yeah. that is study how you it. do it. That, that is how you actually do it. study it. And sorry, you have set me off a little bit because courses are great. It, like in a, the, the, the only example that I can justify using courses if you're starting trading. If you're just starting, you don't have any idea of like candlesticks, you don't even know what you're looking at. Have doing one course is good. Try not to pay for it, because you don't mean to pay for it, it's all free anyway. But if you're like struggling with your trading, doing a course is not gonna help. Mm -hmm. Which is I think kind of what you just said, but yeah. it's it's such a it's such a good point to make because I like, I was speaking to someone the other day who was trading for four years and she was like, Yeah I like looking at courses sometimes because it brings something new to my job. I was, I, was, I was just looking at They're it. Addicted. Like, oh, it's, it's They're addicted. Right. Yeah. They're addicted. Like, it's not going to help. They're fucking addicted. Because people are lazy. They're lazy to journal. Lazy to study the charts. 
lazy to put the actual work in, so they go and look at a course and think it's going to change their life. Okay then, alright, so we leave the rest for part two. Mm -hmm. uh, this was, you know, I hope you guys took what you could from this video. Those who are subscribed, please go ahead and subscribe. For those who dislike the video, please go ahead and hit the dislike. Mm -hmm. For those who like the video, like it. Cool, alright guys, I'll see you in the next video. Peace.